Hey everyone, thanks for watching How To Pixel, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Colorlight 5A-75B panel controller to control your own panel in your light show. So, let's get started. Now the only problem I've ran into trying to make this video is that my color light card is in this screen. It's actually in the back and it's sealed in, screwed in, and I don't really want to take it apart. So whenever I'm talking about anything on the card, I'll have a picture on the screen. But the color light card is one awesome piece of equipment. It's made to control a lot of panels of any different shapes or sizes and run anything you want on them. Anything you program in x lights you could send to it. If you want to play a movie on it, you can connect it to your computer and play videos on it. You can even set it up like it's one of those signs on the side of the road that say, Sale now, come into our store. But most of you watching this video probably came here to see how to set it up in your light display and probably use it with X lights. If at any time there's a certain part of the video you want to see, feel free to use the time codes in the scrub bar or in the description, like always, so you can skip right to the part you want. When wanting to run a smaller panel, and I'm saying smaller compared to giant billboards you see on the side of the highway, or huge screens you see in a stadium, there can be a lot of different choices. You may have heard of the Octa Scroller, you may have heard of hats that sit right on top of a Raspberry Pi, so you can run panels directly off of it, and there might be some other ones, but there's also the Color Light card. The main difference between all of them is the Color Light card is more on the professional side of things, so if you have a business that you want to run a digital screen at, or I've even seen in some stadium screens you use the color light for, whereas everything else is only meant to drive a small number of panels, and it's not really professional, and it's more for people using it for this hobby. But the good thing about color light cards is they are super cheap. Right now, you can find them for about $30, I think actually a little less on Wired Watts, and some of the other panel controllers cost the same price. Another nice thing about the color light card is, like I said, it's not made just for X lights. You can use it for anything. So during... The summer when you're not running your light show, you want to have a family movie night outside. As long as you have the video or movie right on your computer, you can run it right to the screen. And yeah, it won't look like an HD TV because it's going to be more pixelated since panels don't have as many pixels. But it's still awesome. And now I'm going to get into the features on the board and what everything on the board does. First thing I'm going to talk about is powering the color light card. There are two different ways that you can power the color light card. And you should only use one at a time, but it gives you two different options for powering. The first option is to hook your power right into the power terminals on the board. And your second option is to use one of the panel power wires that you use to plug into the back of the panels. They look like this. There's a spot where you can plug that right into the color light card so you don't have to screw anything into it. You can just plug it right into the board. As for what type of power the color light card takes, it takes DC voltage from 3.8 to 5.5 volts. So anywhere in between there, you can use those voltages. Next, I'm gonna talk about how you get the data to the card. The Color Light card has two ethernet ports on it that act like a two port switch, basically like how most pixel controllers work, how you can have the data come in from one ethernet port, go to the controller, and then come out the other ethernet port and go to another controller. If you have multiple color light cards, you can plug the first one into your computer or your Raspberry Pi and then chain them all off of that one device. Now this is very important. The color light card must have a gigabit ethernet connection or it will not work. That basically means whatever device the color light card is plugged into must be able to put out one gigabyte or a thousand megabytes of data on the ethernet port. If you're gonna be hooking your color light card up to a Raspberry Pi with FPP. As long as your Raspberry Pi is a Raspberry Pi 4, you will be fine. The Raspberry Pi 4 can support that. If it's a 3 or lower, you're going to need an adapter to be able to get those speeds. The adapters look something like this, and I'll put a link to one in the description so you can get it if you need it. If you're going to be plugging the color light card into a computer, you're going to have to check the specs on your computer. I know my desktop computer works fine with it when I plug it in, no problems. Like I said, if your device does not have a gigabit ethernet connection, you could just get the adapter and everything should work fine with that. Another thing is the color light card does not directly connect into a network. It does not have an IP address, it doesn't have Wi-Fi, or it cannot connect to any type of internet. 
so you can't plug the ethernet cable from the color light card into your router it doesn't work that way the color light card must be plugged directly into the device that's sending it data so if i wanted to send data to it from my computer i have to plug the ethernet cable directly from the color light card into my computer it can't go through a router it might be able to go through a network switch. I've had some problems with that, and I'll talk about that in a second. Same with a Raspberry Pi. If you're going to use Falcon Player with the Color Light card, you'll have to plug the Color Light card into the Ethernet port on the Raspberry Pi, and then you'll have to use Wi-Fi to talk to the Raspberry Pi to set up all the settings and stuff on it. I wanted to quickly show this little setup behind the panel for how I have my panel connected. At first, what I thought I could do was just have one single Raspberry Pi plug the ethernet cable into a network switch and then plug the ethernet cable that goes to the panel which is right here also into that network switch and then i thought the controller right here my f16 v3 could plug into there and i thought one raspberry pi could control it both from that network switch and it did work but there were a lot of problems the screen looked okay it was doing everything normal but the lights were dropping frames terribly. I was getting maybe one frame every two seconds. The lights were not moving. They'd show a frame, then stop for a few seconds. And I think it's because the one Raspberry Pi could not handle that. So now what I have is two Raspberry Pis. This one is in remote mode on FPP. This one is on master. And this one plugs directly into the panel with this ethernet cable. This one connects to the network switch over there and then talks to the controller. So if I want to access this Raspberry Pi, I have to go over Wi-Fi since the ethernet is being taken up by the color light card. The next thing I'd like to talk about on the color light card is this button right here. This is a test button and this will test all of your panels. It will go through different colors. When you hit it once, it will start test pattern one, and every time you hit it, it will go to the next test pattern. And once you click it and go through all of the test patterns, it will go back to off. Next to the button are two LEDs. One is red and one is green. The red one will light up when the color light card has enough power and can function properly. And then the green one will flash depending on if it's receiving data, if it's not, if there's a problem. And I'll show what the different number of flashes mean on the screen right now. Also right next to the button, is the external interface connector which you probably won't be using but i'll explain it just so you know what it is it allows you to connect additional buttons and leds that you can use to control the board and the leds will show different things based on what the board is doing i don't know a ton about it since i've never used it before and you probably won't have to use it and then the final things on the board are the eight panel outputs these eight outputs is where you plug in your ribbon cable to go to your panels from the card and the card can then send the data through that ribbon cable to control the panels. Now, I couldn't find any exact information about this on the Color Light card manual. All it told me was the max number of pixels it can run. But what I've heard is you can have up to 8 P5 panels off of one connector and 12 P10 panels off of one connector. When you're hooking your panels to the Color Light card, you want to spread out as many panels as possible across multiple outputs. So if you have eight panels, you should try not to put all eight on one connector. Ideally, you should put one panel on all eight connectors. That way there's only one per connector because the less panels per connector, the better. But in most situations, you can't just have one panel on each connector. You're going to have to chain a couple. So just try and keep the chains as low as you can. You also can't select which connectors you want to use. You have to use them in order from J1 to J8. That's what it says on the board. This is connector J1 and then J2, 3, 4, so on. And then this is connector J8 right here. If I only have one chain of panels, that's going to go on J1. If I had two chains, that would go on J1 and J2 with the top chain or the first chain being on J1. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. But that's everything that's on the actual color light card. Now I'm going to move on to my computer so I can show you how to configure your color light card with the software LED Vision to tell it the size of your panel. And at the end of the video, I'll also show you how to put a panel into X lights using a matrix model if you don't know how to. But for now, let's go over to LED Vision. So first, you're going to want to install LED Vision. And the way you can do that is go to this website right here color light inside this is where i got it from and i will put this in the description below then here are the user manuals and all the different versions you can get the latest one that is the one i got just click it download it and then install it but i already have it installed so i'm not going to do that now once you have it installed when you go to run it 
every time you run it, you need to run it as administrator. So right click and run as administrator because if you don't, I've had problems where it cannot detect my color light card and it took me forever trying to figure out what is going on, what am I doing wrong, but when I ran it as an administrator, it worked. So make sure to run as administrator. And then when you open it, it should look something like this. You'll see something on your screen that shows LED and blue, red, and green colors, these circles, and yours will probably be smaller than this and then all of your settings will show up here. Some of these things may look a little different for you if you're just installing it, but I don't wanna erase everything and risk setting up something wrong again. So I'm just going to show you what I changed and how to change it to make yours work. One other thing, I'm not going to show you all of the different buttons and what they do in LED Vision because there's honestly a lot I don't know. I only know how to get it running so you can connect to it with X lights or run videos on it right from your computer. But the first thing you want to do is when you open this, you want to connect this to your color light card so you can configure all the settings on it. And the way you do that is you go under the control tab and you hit LED screen settings right here. And now it will ask for the authorized password. Now I am legally not allowed to give this to you. So sorry, this is the end of the video. I'm just kidding. I'm not sure why they put a password on here, but the default password is 168 and you can change that if you want to and I'll show you how to. But um 168, that's the password. Once you type it in, it will open this new window and this is where you set up most of the settings for your color light card. There are three tabs at the top and you want to start with sending device and you want to select which type of device it is. The color light card is a net card and you want to make sure net card is selected, um, not a sender or a play box, it's a net card. And then click use net card. And then as long as your color light card is directly plugged into your computer and powered um, and you ran LED vision as an administrator, it should show up here. This is my color light card right here, but it's disconnected. I do not have it on. But once you have your color light card connected and you have it selected and you can see it on here, you can go to the next tab, which is the receiver parameters. And holy cow, there are a ton of different settings on here. But the first thing you want to do when you're on here before you change anything is you want to come to the intelligent settings. And this will help you set most of your settings up. When you click it, it will come up with these three options. Single type module, multiple type module, or shaped module. I'm going to start with the shape module. This is if you have very weird shapes set up for your screen. For example, it's not a perfect rectangle or a square. Uh, it's a triangle. You could set that up on here. I'm not sure how you would set that up in X lights, but yes, you could configure it that way. If that's how you had your panel built, you could use that. Multiple type module is if it's a square or a rectangle using multiple different types of panels. So if that was the case, you'd select this. But most of you are going to want single type module where you have all of the same panels and it's either a square or a rectangle. So select that and then hit next. And now you have some settings on here. The first thing you wanna adjust is your cabinet information, the width and the height. This is how many total pixels are on the panel, not how many panels wide or how many panels tall, how many total pixels. So I have seven panels across for width and they are P5 panels, which means there are 64 pixels within each panel. So if you were to do the math seven times 64, the screen has a width of 448 pixels. There are 32 pixels vertically in each panel and there are eight panels up and down. So eight times 32 gives me 256 and I put that in. Cabinet type, this is the, the way the color works on your panels. Most panels are full color and my panels I got from Wired Watts, they are full color. If you don't know which type of panels you have, I would just leave them at full color. Now this is the next part where I really messed up. It asked me again for my width and right here, I put in 448 again because I thought, oh, it's just asking me for the width again. I don't know why. But what it's actually asking is the width of each individual panel. So since I'm using P5 panels, each panel has 64 pixels across. So put in the width of how many pixels are in your panels. You don't need to put in the height for some reason, just the width. Not the width of all of the panels, just each one. So if you have P10 panels, you would want to put in 32. If you have P5 panels, you want to put in 64. The final setting on here that you need to change is the line direction. So the way the panels are wired on each output. So I'm going to put a little picture up 
of this diagram I made of my uh, panel. And you can see all of the panel chains are horizontal and they go right to left. So I would select from right to left because my chains go from right to left. If they were horizontal and I had the color light card on the left side of the panel, I'd have the chains going left to right. If the chains go top to bottom, which would be really hard with short cables, or bottom to top and they go vertical, you could select that. But mine are right to left. Everything else, you can leave the same. Make sure you have your width correctly set up. And then go on to the next page. Now for this next part, it's going to be doing a test and you have to answer some questions. And if you look on the screen at the bottom, I have a video playing right now, or this is actually my phone right now in the garage, taking a video of the screen. So right now this is switching between one and two, and I'm gonna turn off automatic changes so I can change it myself. I need to click between one and two. And as you see, when it's on one, the screen is off. When I click two, the top part of the screen is white. So I need to tell it is one black and two white or is one white and two is black or is there no change? So one, if you look at the video, it's black and two, it is white. So I'm going to leave it one black and two white. So now I'm going to go on to the next one. Now it's going to ask me is one darker than two. So let me turn this off again. So right now you can see how one looks and if I hit two, two is definitely brighter. So that's one. That's two. It's basically like you're at the eye doctor. Number one, number two. And then you could also say one is brighter than two, but two is definitely brighter than one. So now I'm going to hit next. And now I need to go through and check all of these colors to make sure the colors work. So I'm going to turn off automatic changes again. Number one is red. That's correct. Red. Number two, green. That's correct. Number three, blue. That's correct. And then four is completely off. Now I'm going to hit next. And now it's going to ask me how many rows are lighting up in the module. This is very hard to count from the video because um, it's very blurry. But I already know the answer is 16 because every time I tested this, it's 16. Um, make sure you count them though so you know how many rows are lighting up. And then how many rows are lighting up now. I know this one is also one when it asked me that. And then once you click it, it's going to open this giant window. And now what you have to do on this window is basically tell it which pixel number goes where. And that might sound super annoying, like you have to tell every single pixel, but it's not that hard. I don't understand why we need to do these settings, but it makes me do them. It's already set up because I did it, but I'm going to click reset and go through the pane to show you how to show it. So when it comes up, it should be completely blank like this. But what you're supposed to do here is draw out your panel. So you want to go from pixel one and just first you want to draw a horizontal line. And this is the width of the panel. So pixel one is here pixel 64 is over here but it's only half the height because it's only 16 for some reason but this is just to tell it the wiring view and you're just supposed to go in a straight line with most panels you're gonna go like this and if you accidentally skip one you can hit back and just make sure you get them all in order so 42 43 44 45 46 if you accidentally skip one like i said you can go back this is just telling it which pixel number does what and you draw them out like that and then once you're done with the one row you can go on and draw the rest and it'll automatically do it like this see how it's filling out the whole thing because it already knows the horizontal wiring and now i'm just doing the vertical wiring for it and then it said finish please check whether the display is normal and now if you look the display shows led one with a bunch of colors and if we hit okay and then we hit finish which is at the bottom you can't see the button but i click finish now if we look and i'm going to move my mouse over this little part right here you can see my mouse is showing up on the panel it's a little bit laggy and delayed but this led thing right here it shows you how it would look on the screen so after you did the intelligence settings this should have all automatically filled out all of the settings if it didn't there's only three things you should fill in the width right here of your panel and the height this is the total width so how many total pixels and then the cascade whether the panels are wired right to left left to right top to bottom and if you want to you could change the brightness level right here eight is the highest and one is the lowest and when you're on most of these menus the led thing will show up on the panel like you could see right now once you're done with this tab you're going to want to go to the receiver mapping tab and then right here this is where you tell it how many panel cards you have this is if you have a massive screen that has like 50 cards in it like the giant ones you see in stadiums and stuff. This is where you'd set it up here if you're a stadium. The column count and row count. This is how many 
rows of cards there are of panel controllers and how many um columns there are of panel controllers if you only have one or two you would set this in here um if you had two that are horizontal you could put in two for the row and one for the columns also if it's not already filled in put the width of your total panel and the height right here and just make sure there's one box here if you have one card if you have two cards and you select the first one you want to tell it how many pixels there are wide and tall on the first card. So if I had this split in half, I would put in 256 for the height and whatever half of 448 is, that would be 224. I have 224 on the left side and then the second card I'd click and adjust that side too. Then once that's done, you want to click save. Then you want to click save to devices. So that will upload that information to the thing. And it said save mapping successful. If you look, nothing changed. My mouse still shows up perfectly fine. That's because I didn't change any settings from how it was before. And then after that, you can close this window. One other thing you may want to change, if you come down to the screen size and count size, you may want to put in the width and the height, which for some reason has changed for this screen right here. So this tells LED Vision how big to make this little box on your window right here. And as you can see, when I put my mouse over it, it goes on the actual panel. So I'm gonna set this to 448 by 256 and then hit apply. And it made it the right size now. So now it fits my panel. Now, if you wanna test your screen to make sure it's working, you can click test and do any of these tests you want. The gray test just tests different colors. So as you can see, it's on green right now. If I click blue, now the screen turns blue. If I click white, the screen will turn white. Uh, I can click yellow. And then I can make the brightness auto increase. But that is how you set up your panel and LED vision. You can also play some things right to the screen from here. So this little window right here, this is where all of the different elements that I'm setting to the screen shows up. If I put nothing here, that's fine. It's not going to do anything. I don't need to keep this open when I want to send data to it from FPP or my computer, like an X schedule. This is just how it's normally ran. What you would do is you'd right click this LED one and add a normal page. Um, and then as you can see, it changed the picture to black. You could set background picture and background music for this part, but I don't want to add anything. I can now right click it again. And here are all of the different things you can make show up on the panel. File window, I can upload a picture that would show up on there. Um, I can add a clock, I can add some timing on there. If I wanted to play a movie like I was telling you about, you'd have to have it on your computer, but you could click file window. And then the file only shows up on a little bit of the screen. What you want to do, this is to show where the file will show up. You can adjust this thing to show on the panel what section the file is going to take on the panel. Uh, if you click this button right here, it fills out the entire screen. So I want it that big. Now if I right click again, I can add a video, an image, a GIF, whatever I want. Let's say I just want to add an image. If I click that, I can go into my pictures. Let me just find something. I have this on my computer from a older video. Um, I can just put on a picture of the F16 V3 pixel controller. And as you can see, it's doing patterns to automatically move it. And it's also stretched out. And that's because this file is not um, the size as, as the panel. So I could adjust it right here to make it less stretched. And if you don't want doing any of those fancy effects, you could come down here and the in, this is where it does the in effect. I can just set this to no effect. There are a whole ton of effects. Um, and I can also set this one to no effect. And now I have a picture on there. If I wanted to play a movie or a video, I can click add video and go through my videos and select anything I have. So now I just put on a video that I made of how to use x lights and you can see right here This is it on my computer screen and on the bottom window That is what it looks like on the panel right now on the panel It's a little bit more uh, pixely like I said since it's not like HD resolution I still don't know what everything fully does on here That's just the very basic settings how you can get the panel set up and some of the things you can do to play videos or images now I'm going to show you how I have this set up on Falcon Player and how I have it set up in X Lights. So this is my remote Falcon Player. Um, as you can see, it is in remote mode. And all of the settings for the panel are on the channel outputs. This is where you set up any output data for pixels or uh, screens, panels, whatever you have. So under um, uh, E131 output, you don't want to have anything set up here. Because like I said, when I tried controlling lights from the same Raspberry Pi as the screen. Problems happen like crazy. So don't I don't recommend running any lights. 
just try and get another Raspberry Pi if you can. But the settings for the panel right here are under LED panels. So what you want to do is click enable panels and then select your connection, whether it's a hat or a cape or a color light card. And then the interface, it's definitely going to be ETH0, which stands for Ethernet. Um, that's because it's connected with an Ethernet cable. It can't work over Wi-Fi. Right here, you want to tell the width and the height of the panel. So how many panels wide and how many panels tall. So I have seven wide and eight tall. And then select which type of panels you have. I have 64 by 32 panels. Those are P5 panels because it's 64 by 32 pixels. If you had P10 panels, it would be 32 by 16. And then the scan rate, um, that can differ for what type of panels you have. If you look at the description from where you bought them from, it should say what scan rate it is and just select that. Model start corner, this is where you tell what corner is the start corner. So in X lights, you can either set it for the top left or the bottom left when you're setting up the matrix like I'll show in a second. I have mine for top left. You can put in your start channel for the panel and then FPP will automatically determine how many channels are within it. And then down here, each one of these little sections is one panel and you need to set the settings up for it. Um, this little arrow, you can click it and it changes the direction of the arrow. All panels come with an arrow on the back and when you're putting your panel together, you want to take note of which way those arrows are facing. So if you put in your panels with all the arrows facing down, you want to change all these arrows to be facing down. If they were left or right, put them left or right. If they're up, put them up. Then you want to set up this O setting. This is the output. So as you can see, all my panels are on horizontal chains starting from the top. So this is output one and all of these panels are on output one. Then all of these panels are on output two. So I set two, three, four, five, so on and so forth down to eight. Then on each chain, I have to tell which panel is first. So the panels all the way to the right are first on the chain. So this is panel one. This is panel two, panel three, panel four. And then the C dash def, this is the color orientation of the panels. If you leave them at C def, you can adjust the default, which that that's what that stands for color order right here, or you can just select them all manually. I thought all of my panels were RGB, but when I had them running from FPP, the colors were all mixed up. So I don't know if I got my start channel wrong or if they're BGR panels, but I figured out when I put BGR in, the colors fix themselves. So that was very weird. I don't know why it did that. And then once you set up everything on this tab, you can hit save and then it'll ask you to restart FPPD. So you can do that. And one final thing I want to show on here, under your network, when you're setting up your network on the Raspberry Pi that the panel is directly connected to, you do not want to set up anything for the Ethernet interface. Leave it at DHCP and leave everything empty. So that means basically nothing is set up. And that is because if you do set something up, the Raspberry Pi will think it's trying to talk to a router when it's actually trying to talk to the color light card. So just leave it at uh, blank that way it can communicate the data straight out to the color light card. When I had this set up, it was doing messed up things. And then finally, I'm just going to show you how I have the panel made on X lights. So this is the panel right here. It looks very weird. And that's because X lights is trying to show all the pixels for it. But it, it just turns out to like morph it very weirdly. This is just a simple matrix model. And then I have the direction set to horizontal. The number of strings. This is how many vertical pixels your panels have if you're connecting the chains horizontally, which most people do. If you have the arrows facing up or down, this is the number of vertical pixels. And then nodes a string. This is where you put how many pixels are going from left to right, how many pixels wide. Leave strands per string at one. And then the starting location, it gives you the option top left, top right, bottom left, or bottom right. But as we saw on the Raspberry Pi, it only gives us the options of top left or bottom left. And that's how you set up a panel or a screen in X lights. That is also how you set up a color light card on FPP. And that is also how you set up the color light card software. That was a lot of information. So that's everything you need to know about a color light card and how to configure it for your own panel. I know I didn't go over all the features in LED vision, but that's just the basics to get your panel working. If you have any questions or comments, like always, feel free to put them in the comment section below and I'll try to answer as soon as I can. But other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.